This video is all about data and variables. The job of a computer is to take data and process it to turn it into more meaningful data. So therefore, it needs to store data in such a way that it can access it for its programs. It does this through something called RAM, Random Access Memory. Now, for a computer, RAM is just this sea of ones and zeros. And we need to tell the computer where to pick out a group of ones and zeros to manipulate it to do a particular task. The way we do that is using something called variables. Now, a variable is just a box to store data in. We give this box a name to make it easier for us as programmers to find that box in the future. So we could give the box the name X, for example. Now, there are two major types of language when we're talking about programming. There's the strongly typed languages and the loosely typed languages. An example of a strongly typed language is C Sharp. The difference between that and a loosely typed language like JavaScript is that strongly typed languages need you to tell the computer what type of data is going to be stored in that box. For example, it might be an integer, which is a whole number. It might be a Boolean, which can be true or false. It might be a piece of writing, text, known as a string. In a loosely typed uh, language, like JavaScript, we can just say, create a box called this, and you can talk, put whatever you like into it. I'm going to discuss um, data types in a few minutes. But first of all, I want to explain why we have these variables. Variables are there alongside data types to make life easier for the programmer. If we didn't have variables, we would have to store data in a certain place in memory every time we ran our program to tell, be able to tell the computer exactly where to get hold of it again. This would mean our programs and our computers we could only ever run one program at a time because if one program was using the RAM that this program says it needs, there'd be a problem, a conflict, and the computer would crash. By using variable names, we let the operating system that the computer program runs on, Windows, OS X, iOS, whatever the programming system might be, the operating system, let, we let that machine programming system, operating system, determine where that information is going to be stored in RAM, and then that information is given back to the program. So I will tell the computer program, I want to create a variable called X. And as a programmer, I just type var x, or I might type int x in a strongly typed language to create an integer, for example. The computer operating system will then come back and give the program and say, right, that box has now been created for you at this location. So then whenever I refer to box x, the computer program knows whereabouts in RAM it has to go to find the information that was stored in that box. Hopefully that's understandable. So what are data types? Well, a computer program and a computer itself only really understands ones and zeros. Human beings like to put things in a different way. For example, we don't want to know that the number 255 is 11111111, which is what it is to a computer. We like just the number 255, thank you very much. So data types were created so that we could give the computer information in a human understandable way, such as a number, a piece of writing, and then the computer program converts that into the ones and zeros to store in the box. When we ask for that information back again, the computer program looks at what the data type is for that box, converts those ones and zeros back into a way that we can then understand to then display it on the screen or out of a pair of speakers or even as a vibration on a controller. So what data types do we use more often than anything else? Well, the first one to talk about is Boolean logic. In Boolean logic, something can be true or false. So therefore, we can store one of those two values in a Boolean variable, true or false. In numbers, we have two major types of numbers in programming. We have whole numbers, or integers, which are stored in very small boxes, or we have decimal-style numbers, floating-point numbers. Now, the problem with floating-point numbers is there are various different formats that we can use in our programs. 
In some of the programs that you'll see later on, you'll see referred to singles, doubles, floats, decimals. In, ret in sort of general human terms, if you like, all of these are the same thing. They're floating point numbers. The problem is they are working a slightly different way to a computer, and if you don't get the right format, sometimes it can cause problems. Decimal is the one that I will use more often than not. It uses more memory, but it's guaranteed that when you put a decimal number in, when you ask for it back, it will be the same number. There are items called singles and doubles, um, and these can unfortunately change the information that you put in them because of the way that they are stored inside the computer. For example, if I was to take a double and say uh, store in there minus, oh, sorry, store in there number 12.2, and then I was to minus 12.3 from that, the number should be minus 0.1. Unfortunately, if you try it in your code, it will actually be minus 0.1, There's a huge difference in terms of an actual number that you wanted back out and a different number coming out. Sometimes that can be a real problem. Therefore, that's why we use decimals more often than anything else. This is really because of, in the historical um, times, back in the 1960s, 1970s, when memory was really expensive, especially RAM, uh, you wanted to store things in as small a box as possible. So they came up with singles and doubles, which were small boxes to store information in. But unfortunately, they could make slight changes to the number. Nothing major, you might think, but those numbers changes can snowball through a calculation to give you the wrong answer in the end. So decimal is quite often the number type we'll use. Characters, single letter, for example, A, B, C, is known as a char, C-H-A-R, or character. And we will store those sometimes. Other times, we may want to string a whole series of characters together. A so-called string is a piece of text. Certain Programming languages, operating systems, deal with strings in different ways. Uh, in C-sharp, we don't have to worry too much. We just call it a string type, give it a name, and type in some writing. Other major types that you might come across will be points, uh, specifically in C-sharp. Uh, a point is a double integer, if you like. It's a series of coordinates, an x and y value. Size is exactly the same thing, but instead of x and y inside the point type, there's width and height. And we'll be using those in amongst games development. Other than that, really that's everything that you need to know at this stage about variables.